Well, good morning guys and welcome along. Uh, we are up here at Warden Norcut in North East for round 10 of the British Pro Car Endurance Championship. So Warden Law is located right up in the northeast corner of the UK, a long way for me to go and very high up the country. So I've been taking a lot of uh, altitude sickness tablets and I've even got the medical team on standby in case I start getting nosebleeds to stop me bleeding to death. So hopefully I should be okay. So it's the Sunday morning of the race weekend. I've already had a full day practice yesterday, which was dry. Um, take you around for a lap of that so you can see which way the circuit goes and then we'll talk you around one of the BPEC carts and a few of the rules and regs that keep the, the racing so close. So let's go. So here we are on board. Let's take you for a lap in our senior pro cart around Warden Law. Down the start finish straight over to the left hand side. Just as we're coming into the first corner, we've got a slight rise in the track, which unsettles the cart slightly. Quick lift on the throttle to rotate the cart in, back on the power and driving it through Brian's bends. Great corner this, quite a fast bend. And on the left hand side, you want to try and hang it over to the left a little bit further to straight line the right at the first part of the dog leg. Not run out too far left and then back in across the inside curb and try not to use too much of the outside. Short little squirt down the straight into St John's. Big curve on the inside here, try not to ride too much of that and try not to run too wide on the exit and drag all that dirt onto the circuit. Into centre one hairpin, slight rise in the track just before, hard on the brakes, getting the front end of the car right into the apex and not running out too wide on the exit of centre one, only going halfway across the track, back over to the left to get yourself in a nice position for centre two. Flat out in a senior pro car, and carry that speed all the way around into the back chicane. Really important corner this for the lap time. You need to try and ride all over the curves and straight line this chicane as much as possible. Very, very similar to the uh, chicane on the back straight at Sheddington. And carry that speed all the way down to the Gasworks hairpin. Hard, hard on the brakes, throwing the cart sideways to try and scrub that speed off and help you get the nose right into the apex of the hairpin. As the track drops away, back on the power, driving out into the horseshoe. Three apexes here for the horseshoe, the most important one being the third and final one. Don't want to run too wide on the third apex, keeping it over to the left hand side of the track by the pit entry, so you can get a better drive around paddock bend and carry that speed all the way down the start finish straight. So that's my version of a lap around Warden Law in a senior pro car. Let's give you a lap at practice speeds and then we shall have a look around one of these carts.
So here we are guys, this is a BPEC spec cart for 2023. Let's start off by looking at the chassis. So the chassis, it's an open chassis class, you can run whatever chassis you like. This is an MS that is supplied and distributed by Howard Lucas. Uh, a lot of people are on these, or the Apollo chassis, which is supplied and distributed by Adam Nichols. Um, sorry mate. Take what you want. Take what I want. <laughs> the, uh, there is also the hash chassis out and also the occasional seven carts, but so it's an open chassis class, you can run what you like. Coming around to the tyres, the tyres are controlled Dunlop SL1 tyres. Um, these are supplied by one distributor and then they are fitted the night before the race and kept overnight, locked up, so nobody can play any silly games with the tyres. Uh, they also run slicks in the rain, don't bother changing to wet tyres, so the slicks are run all the time. Moving along, get to the fuel. The race fuel is supplied by every team, so every team supplies 20 litres of fuel so that it all goes into one big drum and there's no silly games with the fuel. Uh, we've got lead posts on here. The cart must, as a minimum driver and cart weight, it must reach 185 kilos at all times out on track. That's why it's nice to try and get all the drivers matched so you haven't got to change lead, or if you do have to change lead, have a quick change lead system to make the stops faster. Moving around to the engines, we've got these GX200 Honda engines which are supplied by RPM. Now these are all tuned on the dyno with the carbs and the ignition timing tuned so they all make roughly the same horsepower. They are then sealed up so that no work can go on with the engine and if you ever need any work doing on them they have to go back to RPM, be redone, re and resealed so it's a fair competition with the engines. With the brakes, I believe they can run four pots, but most people run these Kelgate GTKs. And that is pretty much it. It's a great championship for a lot of track time. And with all these rules and regulations in place, it makes it fair for everybody. So it's all down to driver talent and setting the car upright. The gearing is fixed at EVA. 20 or 22 on the front and 64 or 66 on the back, a combination of that depending on the circuits throughout the year. Oh, I love this. <laughs> Hey Hawk Greg. So here we go then guys, Sunday morning. The format is a half hour qualifying session by uh, followed by the six hour endurance race, four mandatory pit stops. Been a bit of a delay this morning with some problems with the scale, so they're just waiting to get the boys out for qualifying. Um, classes, we've got Elite, which is a yellow board with black numbers. Super Pro, which is a red board with white numbers. Pro, which is a blue board with white numbers and Clubman, which is a black board with white numbers. So four different classes in the overall championship. Let's see how they all get on in quality. Super tricky conditions out there for the first wet laps on brand new rubber. As you can 
can see people fighting the car all over the place. So there we have it, qualifying's over. Track's all gone quiet. Really, really tricky session out there for everyone involved. Superb driving skills, slick tyres on a damp, greasy track. Very, very low grip on new tyres as well. So here we can see the result. We've got 113 red graphics. Again, Jess Alexander there in the wet, just unbeatable really this year in the wet. So she is on pole overall and the top elite first in class for super pro is team tate number 31 fourth overall and then a big shout out to jdm number 22 fifth overall and first in the pro class uh, astonishing lap time for a pro team so overall fifth on the grid and then pole for clubman was urban two number 15 down in 23rd place overall so 43 carts on the grid now they're just going to fuel up and get ready on the grid for the race Here we are, formation lap and they're off. We've even got the sunshine to come to join us. Maybe that's why they call it Sunderland. second formation lap just to try and get a bit of heat in the tyres in damp conditions Jess Alexander slowed the pack up getting them two by two like the arc ready for the race start here we go Red graphic looks to be away at the front. So let's let the race settle down and we'll come back and see how it all pans out.
Oh, it's just over 15 minutes in, the race has settled down a little bit. First few counting laps have passed, everyone's spread out a bit, and we've got 113 red graphics in the overall lead and the lead of Elite. We've got 313 TTM in third overall and leading pro. 31, Team Take 2, in 6th overall but leading Super Pro and Urban 2, number 15, in 12th overall leading Clubman. So, it should stay nice and settled, the sun's come out, the track's looking amazing and hopefully now we'll end up with a dry 6 hour and we'll settle into a nice rhythm until the first stops. So here we are folks, just over an hour in now. Uh, 42, Josh Brooker, MS Lucas, he is leading and was pulling away from 113 Red Graphics, but they just started to read him back in and equalise the lap time. So it's 42 from 113 from 43 for the lead of the race. Uh, still not had the first pit stops for those guys. Unfortunately, uh, there was a few guys all just went off after the D. Uh, apparently a cart went through, dragged some water onto the circuit and then the next three or four carts that went through had no opportunity but to go through the paddle and then went off. All collided into each other, into the barrier, and uh, number 44 MS Harris come off worse with a bent axle. So they've had to come in, straighten the axle, change the driver, and send it back out, which has kind of ruined their race, unfortunately. Spin it! I don't know if it is me or not, could be me as a bad Owen, but that's the second time Ms. Harris have had bad luck this year whilst I've been at the races, so uh, maybe I should stay away. Sorry boys. Race leader Jake Brooker at number 42. Here we have 113 Jess Alexander chasing him down. There, 43 Josh Focus. First three positions of the race overall. Try not to trip over each other. Ninety six serving a penalty. You see how painful that is in the middle of a race if you sat stationary. The fifty eight DWS in for their stop. Driver change, lead off, start the other motor, and away you go. Three one eight there, the super stop, not even slowing the cart down. So the process of the pit stop is in, onto the way bridge, engines off fuel cap off, push it into the fuel bay, fuel it up, push it from the fuel bay, fuel cap on first, push it from the fuel bay without tripping over the cart, 
down into the driver change area where you can start the engines and off you go. This is really where races can be won and lost. Graphics have inherited the lead because I haven't done the pit stop, so they're stretching out until the pit lane's empty. We should see where they stack up when they come out of pit. Here we go, 113 in this lap. Push onto the way bridge. Check the weight, off the scales, fuel cap off, into the fuel bay. Fuel cap on, away she goes. Just getting back in for another stint by the looks of it. See if they can take the fight to 42. Good stop. So here we are guys, first round of stops looks to be over. Uh, it is still 42 MS Lucas from Red Graphics from MS Soco Select. However, uh, MS Lucas appeared to have gone from just over a five second consistent gap to 16 seconds over the pit stop. So they've had some incredible pit stop there, or short fueled it to be able to gain that much time through the stops. Uh, 113 Rosso Corsa, FSR Haas 2 and X Racing are in that order for the Super Pros. JDM, TTM and Rethink Racing Blue in that order for the Pros. Urban 2, Kart Sim 69 and Elite Helmets in the order for Clubman. So yeah, red, red, red graphics have got some work to do now to try and claw that time back. They've lost in the pit stops. Let's see if they can get back into this race. So here we are guys, about two and a quarter hours in now. The first round of stops has properly settled down. It's still 42 MS Lucas from 113 red graphics for elite. Gaps down to 13.7. So red graphics are slowly chipping away at it, <coughs> clawing them back in. In the Supro class, we've got 113 Rosso Corsa from FSR2 Haas with a gap of about five seconds. So that's quite a close battle for the Super Pro class there. Down into Pro, we've got 313 TTM from 000 TSM. Very, very close gap there of only 1.7 seconds. So that should be a close battle for the rest of the race. And in the Clubman class, we've got Urban 2 with an almighty lead over Kartsim 69. So. Urban 2 in quarter, commanding position in the Clubman class. Oh, it's just over three hours in. Second round of pit stops have kind of all sorted themselves out. It's difficult to keep track of it as people are on different strategies. The mandatory four stops can be taken whenever. So some people like to, to mix it up to get out of sequence with the pit stops. But overall, we've got MS Lucas 42 with 113 red graphics in second. Only one and a half seconds behind now. Both had driver changes, so we'll see how that gap changes over the next stint. And FSR Haas number seven is only a few seconds behind, and that is if they beat Red Graphics, they will have beat them in the six hour championship. So Red Graphics need to try and stay in front of number seven till the end of the race. Here 
go guys, you can see 42, 113, blue together, 2 hours, 42 left. So literally we're the other way around the previous lap, now it's 42 back in front, super tight battle going on here for the lead of the race. All the time this is going on, they're holding each other up and FSR Haas are closing them down. Here it becomes a three-way fight. There we are, about four hours in, two hours left to go. It was all going so well. 113 and 42 were still bumper to bumper for the whole 40 minutes. Unfortunately, 42 then dropped an engine and there's just been a bit of panic and drama in the pits replacing the motor on 42. So unfortunately that's dropped them out of contention for the race win and what was a really really close battle with 113 but lovely to see 113 team leader Adam and Howard from the uh, opposition working together to get the car back out on track as quick as possible. There's also a bit of drama for number 10 X Racing with a steering column issue. So it's all just been a bit panicky. Panic! Panic! Eight minutes of the race left to go. 113 with about eight seconds over FSR Haas. Sun's gone down. Floodlights are on. We're nearly home. Still racing all this time later.
So there we go guys, six hours is over and it was 113 red graphics from FSR Haas. So fantastic race, close gap at the end there. Massive, massive congratulations to 113 red graphics. Uh, been a very up and down year leading into this season. So huge congratulations to everyone in their team. That means they've won the overall championship and the BPEC six hour championship, British championships in the same year. So brilliant, brilliant result. Let's run through the full result or the top three of each class now. We can see there, as we said, red graphics from FSR Haas and 318 Team Tate, the top three overall and the top three in class. Then we've got Team Tate 2, number 31, as the winner of the Super Pros, ahead of X Racing and FSR 2 Haas in the Super Pro. Unfortunately, FSR 2, number 8, were actually leading that class until about four minutes from the end, and then it appeared they had some kind of engine drama dropping them down to third, so really unfortunate for those guys. In the Pro class, we've got TTM 313, ahead of 000 TSM and Rethink Racing Pink 103. And then down to the Clubmans, we have got 101 Zen Zero ahead of Carton North East Lightweight and Urban 2. So huge congratulations to everybody involved in the race. Really put on a great show and a massive, massive thanks to Bobby and Ange for continuing to run a great BPEC series.